Welcome to the Stuart Major Beam Rebuild. This is part 35, quite an important part, and it's called fitting the engine bed plate to the plinth and mounting the pedestal to the base. So the first thing to do is to remove the engine from the plinth. If you can remember far enough back to the last episode, you will remember that I drilled some pilot holes in the plinth. These holes were 5 32 of an inch in diameter, and then I tapped them 2BA and filled the holes with some cyanoacrylate adhesive to harden the wood. This makes for a very good thread. All I'm doing at the moment is just cleaning out the surplus cyanoacrylate adhesive to make sure that the studs go all the way down in the holes. And after this, it's time to blow away all the debris using an airline. The next step is to place the engine on the plinth, hold it at an angle so I can get my hand in to connect up the pipework. This was much more fiddly than it looks here. It took quite a while to get these things to fit onto the unions. Don't forget to use a spanner to tighten up the union nuts and under no circumstances let go of the engine with your other hand. As you can see here, it's the bed plate onto the plinth time. I'm using the studs that I made a while back. These studs are made from long 2BA bolts and the nuts are permanently locked tighted onto the end of them. So it's a simple job to select a washer and put the bolt through the hole and tighten it down into the wood. Now you have to have a bit of a delicate touch for this. It's no good going at it like a bullet to gate and you certainly do not need an electric screwdriver. This is definitely a hand job in my opinion and I mean a hand job with the tool that you see here. As you feel your way in with the, this could be a sex film really when I think about it, as you feel your way in slowly with the tool, stop immediately if you feel any tightness. That will mean that the stud is fully tightened. As usual, take your time with this job. Don't rush it. If you over tighten the stud, then the thread will strip. And it's not a massive problem because you'll generally only do it once. You'll be more careful after the rest. But you will always know that that certain stud is not properly fitted. And that bothers me. But then again, I am a bit strange. I managed to get just the right amount of pressure on all of the studs and none of them stripped. At this stage, I can clearly state smug mode is engaged. But really, this is a very boring job. I lost the will to live several times during the process, but eventually I got there and everything was nice and tight. This next job is much more interesting. I'm fitting the pedestal. Now, if I make a mess of this, there are serious consequences, I'm afraid. And if you're doing a job like this, Take note, really take your time, think before you drill the holes. The first thing to do is to securely fasten the crankshaft into the plumber block by tightening the nuts. Here I'm just putting in position the other components to just have a look at them really. Although I do need to put on the flywheel and the pulley to show me where the end of the pedestal needs to be. Here's the pedestal going in place and everything's looking good. Once the pedestal is in position, what I'm doing here is tightening up the nuts on the plumber block, but not quite as tight as on the one at the bed plate end. This clip is showing me fitting some packings underneath the pedestal. It's most important to make sure that the packings are precisely the right height. If you put too much pressure on the pedestal, it will try and lift the crankshaft and it will bind. And if you use too little packing, the crankshaft will drop and it will also bind. I ended up making two small blocks which consisted of two pieces of mahogany stuck together with cyanoacrylate adhesive. After the adhesive set, I ground them down on the belt sander to be a perfect fit. If you're doing a job like this, do not make the packings a slack fit. They need to be slightly pushy, just very, very slightly, because don't forget, they're eventually going to be bolted down onto the bed plate and they're taking the weight of the pedestal and the end of the crankshaft. So if they were a little bit on the small side, you're likely to get a dip on the pedestal height, which would cause the crankshaft to bind. It is absolutely essential to get the crankshaft right on a steam engine. If you do not get the crankshaft right and it's binding or it's off-centre, then the rest of the steam engine will never work, because the mechanical linkages will be completely wrong. This clip is showing me using a modified pencil. I modified it on the belt sander. Not good engineering practice, I know but it does the job. I'm going to be drilling the holes in the packings oversize anyway. After I drilled them, I cleaned them up on a piece of green sandpaper, but you can't see it because I didn't film it properly. For the main marking out, I'm going to use some transfer punches. These are transfer punches. All you do with them is put them in the hole and tap them with a hammer and they put a nice center point exactly where you need it to be. And now it's time to remove the pedestal, 
Put that somewhere safe and be careful not to chip the paint. Then remove the flywheel. You do not want this big heavy piece of metal hanging on the end of the crankshaft unsupported. And then it's time to drill a hole in your beautiful baseboard. Be very careful doing this, you don't want the drill bit to skate all over the baseboard. I'm using a 5 30 seconds of an inch pilot drill, mainly because it was laying about in the bench from the last operation. Once I've piloted both of the holes, which are precisely in the right place, owing to the fact that I've used transfer punches, it's time to open up the holes to the finished dimension, which is a quarter of an inch. Make sure at all times you hold the drill vertical. This of course is a hand drill, not a pedestal drill. So it's quite easy to get it off centre, and that would not be good. I'm going to use countersunk bolts for mounting the pedestal, so the baseboard will need countersinking from underneath. But there is also a little bit of roughness around the holes at the top, so I'll just clean these off with the countersink. I don't want anything to affect the position of the pedestal relative to the crankshaft. So now very carefully holding the engine out over the bench, but really it's heavy enough to just sit there, I'm countersinking the underside, much deeper than the top side, to take the bolts. It's very important to make sure that the bolts are well recessed underneath. So with the pedestal bolted to the baseboard, it's time to just touch in the mahogany with a very small paintbrush. I'm using the same Ron Seal hard glaze varnish that I use for the baseboard, and this varnish will not only make the assembly look good, it will oil proof the packings. And now as you can see clearly, success, the crankshaft has a very nice firm but free feel to it. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.